Guys, good news and bad news. Bad news is you cannot see me on the road any longer doing my material because I finished my special and it will be coming out in the spring of 24. Thank you, Chicago. You are amazing. Here's the good news. When I'm not doing my solo tour, I'm doing the group tour. So come see me and the guys from Impractical Jokers. The tour kicks off in just a couple of weeks. In January, we're in Highland, California. We're in Vegas, baby, at Resorts World Theater. And then at the Mullet Arena in Tempe, Arizona. Then we got the Impractical Jokers cruise with Eric Andre and a ton of other people. Felipe Esparza, Steve O, Adam Ray. Um, just a ton of great stuff happened on that one. And there still are some cabins left. It's our fifth one. It's going to be insane. Get shipfaced.com or shipfacedcruise.com. Come along. That's January 22nd to the 26th. From there, we go to Florida. We're doing the Hard Rock in Hollywood. We're doing the uh, Seminole Casino in Tampa. And uh, then the Hard Rock Casino in Cincinnati. Uh, then in April, Youngstown, Ohio at the Covelli Center, a couple at the Chicago Theater right there, a couple at Foxwoods, uh, and then in June, Atlanta at the Symphony Hall, Mobile, Mobile Alabama at the Sanger Theater. So we are going to be all over. Uh, check out ImpracticalJokers.com or really just go to SavileCanoComedy.com to get tickets. I hope to see you guys on the road. This is the last, second leg and last leg of the Jokers tour as well. So when we're done with this one, the show's retired. You can't see it anymore. So hope to see you guys on the road and look out for my special next year. Chrissy, California, that's who I am. I got a show January 12th in El Cajon, a.k.a. El Cajones, California, San Diego area, Magnolia Theater. And then January 13th at the Wiltern in Los Angeles. These are big shows. This is the only time I'm going to be in California. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. Then February 2nd at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, which is one of, every, I mean, one of the most beautiful venues in the country. And then February 3rd, Washington, D.C. And then I end everything February 8th uh, in Reno, Nevada. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki's. Don't be a fake, don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. It's, no, so it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me, at tea time, everybody agrees. I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. It must be exhausting, always rooting for the hey, babe. That sounds like a church interview. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it like that, though. Okay. All right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> this is the first time I ever heard that, so I'll try to mimic Let's it. Let's do it. All right, you ready? Yeah. It's me. Hi. I'm, I'm the problem. problem. It's me. At tea time, everybody agrees. I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. It must be exhausting, always rooting for the hay, babe. <laughs> you did it. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Should old acquaintance be hey, babe. Clearly, this is the New Year's episode. New Year, new beer. New Year. New Year, new beard. New Year. New ball. Here we go. You ready for this? These are the predictions, the 2024 Let's predictions. If 5% of these come true, this is on the internet. This is going around, making the rounds. At home, agree. I want you to, if you're in the car, honk the horn if you agree. If you're at home and you agree, um, what... Uh, you got real hair. You got real fingernails. If you have a job, you go to school, and you don't need anyone to tell you how to handle your business, business. you make, make some noise. Make some noise. So here we go. 2024 predictions. We start off crazy, we start off easy, and then it gets wild. Okay. Taylor Swift elopes. I would say yes. Yes, Taylor. I think the only way she's going to top herself is it, that will send people, I mean, that will drive people crazy. That's it. Taylor Swift elopes with Travis Kelsey. Yeah. That's what they're saying. And does she become Taylor Kelsey? Taylor Kel That's interesting. Or does he become Travis Swift? Because she's a Swifty. She he's, becomes Travis Swift, I think. Travis Swift, yes. Yeah. And the whole thing. Uh, She'll, he'll do whatever she says. Yes. Nikki Haley revealed to be a swinger. I don't know what that means. Kamala Harris, too. Who's Nikki Haley? Nikki Haley's a politician. Oh, the one that was caught, like smoking weed and groping the guys? Yes. Yeah, okay. Her and Kamala Harris revealed to be swingers. Do we say yes? Well, I could believe in Nikki Haley from the footage I've seen so far. Oh, Zempic has horrible side effects? No, uh, I bet you. Who knows? We know that Do they already. test it out? How yeah. do you know? Leftists, How do you know? Leftists get really into Jammu and Kashmir. I don't know what that means. Um, Bill Clinton dies. Possible? 
He's he of the age? Well, I don't wish it on him, but yeah, we don't. No, definitely don't wish it on him. But I'm just saying it's. it's I hope not. Ted Cruz loses. We don't know. To loses what? what? That's the thing. Uh, so that's probably definitely true. He's gonna Ooh. lose something. Oh, here's a fun one. Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet get engaged. Are they dating? I don't know. Yes, they are. They are. Is that a thing? A long time thing already? Yes. A long time thing. Like, are they serious? And they went there together. Whoa. Venetia knows. Venetia plays the tennis on the Astoria Public Tennis Sports. That's nice. <laughs> do you? Uh, oh, do so, you have a tennis, like, tennis outfit? Yeah. You do. You want to play? Let's play tennis. I, you know, let me tell you something right now. There's tennis courts around right here. Right now, Venetia is dressed as a lot lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I bought a tennis racket and a bunch of tennis balls, two tennis rackets and a bunch of tennis balls, because where the tennis courts were where I moved, and uh, I never stepped on the court once. I'm a member at a tennis club Not that I paid balls. too much money for. I haven't went to once. You haven't gone? I swear to God, I'm a member at a tennis club, and I haven't went once, and Delilah went once, and hates it yeah and I, i've already paid the year in i full. think pickleball is more our speed now <laughs> yeah all right what here we go. go what can you do besides tennis though nothing <laughs> no you, oh, can, go eat. Shit out you can go eat at the restaurant and if you don't spend the money they charge your card anyway so you have to go eat there or you get charged it was the one of the worst decisions i've ever made all right kanye west converts to hinduism <laughs> he's he hasn't yes. already swastika was the original that was a hindu uh symbol so there you go ron Wait, DeSantis. What? Swa Wait, who? The swastika? That he was an original to Hindu symbol. Okay. It didn't mean, you know, the Nazis made of it bad. Of course, they co-opted that, um, as, long as, as well as the Charlie Chaplin mustache. Yes. Ron DeSantis cries on national TV. That would be fun for us. Joe Biden welcomes his first great-grandchild. Uh, why would, okay, okay. Here's, here's one. Here's, here's a coin flip. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon reveal they had a fling in the 90s. Mm, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Capri pants back in style. No way. They're never coming back. Everybody does the Macarena. The okay. 2024 DNC ends in violence. Jesus. A hurricane hits Washington, D.C. Okay. The Senate staffer caught having gay sex writes a heartfelt personal essay that goes viral. Please, God. <laughs> silly bands come back and right-wingers drum up a moral panic over them. What silly bands? I don't know. And why do right wingers drum up a moral path? Why did this get political? Why is this political? Who who is who's made these? The Twitter. Somebody on the Twitter, Twitter made them. Twitter Twitter sent it. <laughs> or X. Yeah. <laughs> um. I so I don't know because it is one of those things when you come to the end of the year. First of all, would you say 2023 was a good year, bad year, middle? You know, was it as the kids say, was the year mid? For for myself or in, for the, <laughs> what I what my what perception is for the world mid yeah mid you know what mid means right of course I do mid yeah I just was talking about slang the other day I was slang. mid I, I it's so slang. mid I could do a lot of slang yeah so do would you say give us a give us a twenty twenty three slang look up the most and let's let's see who who knows what the most slang is we'll see it's almost like a spelling bee we'll see who knows how to use it correctly would you say twenty twenty three was lit or mid right. You can say I that, know. but then you got to also have to explain to you what it means. There's right? one, there's one, like the word of the year was Riz. I know what Riz is because I had to look it up because people called me a Riz God all the time. Wait, the word or of the Sal year was, with the Riz. The was Riz? <laughs> they said Sal Riz, Sal Riz God, this, that, and I was like, I got to look Riz up. What does Riz mean? It's, it's basically, I thought it was going to be bad, but it's not. It's basically short for charismatic, charisma. Ah, Is okay. correct? And I was like, thank God. I was looking up like, all right, what am I? What's wrong with me? Okay. And then they thought I had charisma. So what would you say? Would you say 23 like I wear was Riz? sunglasses indoors. Prescription. I wear my sunglasses I would in say, the afternoon. Yeah. Riz. Oh, sorry, I learned Riz. So you didn't. You, you knew Riz, but you didn't I know Riz. I didn't know Riz. Riz. I, I didn't know Riz. I know, right. I know Riz. I know Riz from Greece. I know the Riz Carlton. Yeah. The other big one is Cap. Cap, cap I, I know. know. Cap is a lot. Cap, I know. Because it used to be, it used to be, I'll bust a cap in your ass, but it, cap has now taken yeah, on yeah, a different meaning. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Where did, why does cap mean lie? Where did it come from? What's the etymology? No, don't show us. You test us. Oh, no. <laughs> where did cap come from? Yeah. Cap, I mean, or all those, you just you throw them out. Cap, I mean, we, you think we could figure it out? Cap, I think, like, like cap is like, no cap means like I'm not lying. Right. But like no, no cap. But why does cap mean lie? Because cap, maybe something with caps lock in the phone, like, you know, like you're ca putting things on capitalizing things. State I capitals. I know everyone. It's tied to like the hat emoji. Yeah. Well, I, that's because that's a cap. It probably came out of a rap song, to be honest. Yeah. It says that the cap is to brag. 
brag or exaggerate about something. So no cap. Probably like no cap. Lie. Okay. No lie. But why is cap to, you know what I mean? Why is that that? I don't know. Yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could start a slang word that got into the zeitgeist and people use it and it becomes part of the vernacular? A lot of big words I just said. Yeah. I like that. Vernacular. Zeitgeist. Yeah. 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 And we could perpetuate that. Perpetuate's a good word. Here's yeah. another word I just learned. Tell me what this means. If I said, Sal, stop being such an iconoclast, what would I be saying you are? I know the word. <laughs> I know the word. <laughs> but I would probably, I would need context. I feel bad that I don't know. The, 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 that's going to annoy me that I don't know it. So an iconoclast, it means like you're somebody who's like taking down like higher powers. Like you're taking down like, like when I, when, on the Christmas episode, when you were like disparaging Robin Hood? me. You know, if I said, you know, case for Christ and you're saying there's no way Christ is real, you're being an iconoclast, you're being iconoclastic towards Christ, which might come back and bite you might not. I don't know. Okay. So something like that. Iconoclast was a good word okay. that I learned. That's fun. What about the word daft? If I said you're acting daft, what am I saying? Not daft. Da da not like daft punk? Like, yeah, like, like what is daft a synonym for? Daft would be what punk? Am I thinking of deft? Deaf might be another word. De uh, is 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 it not like um? Which is another word I learned. Uh, uh, like agile, like not agile in the sense of physical. But no, it means crazy. Like if I was like you're acting daft, it oh, means you're acting not, crazy. Is deft a word? D E F T. Deaf. <laughs> daft. That's a good. I do a good deaf. Do it. Daft. Yeah, I, I yeah. said agility, but yeah. So I was thinking. Yeah, the way she was rubbing my balls was deft. <laughs> <laughs> he he was rubbing my balls. The most deft. Yo, it's ball um, play. Okay, so daft. So what, daft what is you, crazy. Just crazy. What would you say about twenty twenty three though? Um, for you personally, not overall for the world. Personally, for me, I thought it was a good year. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm dealing with the same nonsense I've, I've always dealt with. But I, on the whole, a lot of good memories, good moments um, from the special. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. It'll be out in shit. the spring. Um, is there a year, like when I say, what would you say so far in your life has been the worst calendar year and the best calendar year? Because yeah. there's numbers in everybody's head. Like for me, I know them. Yeah, I'd say uh, 20 and 21 were pretty bad. Were the worst calendar years? Y yes, I, th I would say they're in the running for sure. And it's not, it's, it's not just because of the pandemic and, and you know, what that did, but just so many different things. But, uh, but yeah, some of the best. Yeah, I, I, if I sat down, I could pinpoint them. What I is the best year? What has been the best year of your life, calendar year? What is like a year you could live and you wish you could... Take 2017 was sick. Number one year. I, I mean, I just, off the top of my head, it was, it was a really you good year. You got to accomplish many goals and life goals and dreams and stuff. Yeah, 2017, 2019, really good years. Um, Mine's 2019 as well for the best year so far. Really? 2019, I think there was something. I could be nostalgic about it because obviously it was the last year pre-COVID that yeah. we had that was, you know, relatively normal. Even though yeah. things were still insane then, we just, you know... We're rationalizing it better. But 2019, I just felt free. Yeah. I felt good. I felt... Um, yeah, I, 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 me too. Yeah. And if you go back and look, it's like I, I looked, even though it was only like four years ago, I look exponentially older now. I looked younger there. I looked more healthy, more vibrant. But also, I was coming off like a string of good years. It was like, it was a, I was riding high there. And then we all got chopped at the knees. But like we say, like, we, like we've talked about many times in this podcast, the good old days are happening right now. So you will look at yourself right now, five years from now, and can't believe how good you look right now. So don't, don't, don't forget that. Okay, so it's always going to get worse. Yeah, well, it's always, you're always getting older. So you'll always look back in five years and be like, I looked better back then. Yes, you're never as yes. fat as you thought. You're never as old looking as I'm you as thought. I'm as fat as I thought. I'm never as you don't look light fat as you thought. Right. Yes, but, I still say this is my skinniest Sal. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I, 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 two down times was a, was a banger. was a banger. But, uh, and the worst year was 2000, 2021. My worst year was 1998. I had 98 mono. I had a good year. 2003 was a great year. 98 was a bad year for me because I had mono and my mom had gout and we just ruined our year. Okay. <laughs> but I did get cable in 1998. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I was 2010 for you guys. 
2010, 2010 for me was actually good because it's the year I graduated physical therapy school and the year I really started into stand-up comedy. So that was a good year for me. That was a year of possibility because I just got my physical therapy degree, my doctorate, I'd gotten everything, and I was out there hitting the open mic scene and kind of discovering this new world of comedy. So I would say 2010 was was actually a good year for me. And you, that's when the show started, right? 2K10 I, was when I got the show. When we No, when we shot the pilot presentation in 2010. Right. So that's a good year. Uh, it's also the year I moved out of a basement apartment after like nine years, I think. The, uh, 2000, yeah, after nine years, I moved out of a little basement studio apartment into like a three bedroom apartment. That's crazy. That's you nice. lived in a basement studio apartment for nine years. I'll do you one better. I slept on a couch. I had no mattress. For nine years? Yeah, nine years. Wow. From, from August 2001 to July 2010. Wow. I and you never complained. You were like, this is just where I live and how I live. Yeah, rent was great. Right. All in utilities included was like, it, it was great. It was crazy. When I moved there, it was 600. And then uh, there was a new landlord, right? And he kept it 600. So I was like, okay, cool. And then, the, and then I became friends with him. And then the next landlord came. And as a favor, he told the new landlord that my rent was 550. So if my landlord raised it 50 bucks, it'd be the same again. Nice. The next landlord didn't raise it. Okay. Hold on, there's more. Now there's an, enter the fourth landlord. I became friends with the third. He did the same thing for me, and the last landlord didn't raise it. So over the nine years, I started at 600 rent, went down to 550, and then went up to 500 when I left. 500 <laughs> rent, all in, utilities included. Come on. Come on. You were Come on, Eileen. Money. Yeah. Bank, you had more money in your bank account then than you do today. I was saving like nobody's biz. Like nobody's biz. I mean, I had my computer in the kitchen, but still. But whatever, you dealt with it. Yeah, I dealt, you dealt with it. And you didn't think of it any other way? No, I liked it. It was cozy. I decorated the way I want. I somehow had enough storage. The kitchen was big, even though the place was small. You so were living I had like a, a hostage. I had a desk in it. <laughs> a lot of my kitchen... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was living like a cell. I, a, lot of my, uh, a lot of my kitchen cabinets housed like, like what would be in closets. But, you ever uh, have a, a rat or a, or a roach? Don't lie. Um, no, I did have one of those thousand leg silverfish type jammies. I saw one of those MFs one time because it was a basement apartment. Yeah. It was, but I did have half windows, like almost full size windows. So that was also nice. So you actually had a garden apartment then. You didn't have a basement. You had well, a garden apartment. It was apartment. the basement. But, it, but if you had half windows, I think the real estate people, the good people at Redfin or Zillow would list that as a garden apartment. Okay. Because you have a full, somewhat of a full size window. Safe light repair. Safe, safe light, light replace. replace. So, why did you bring up 2010, Pimp? What was significant about that for you? Nothing. I just thought it was a cool year. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry for 2004. I don't know. What. Ruben Stutter. Oh, the Velvet uh, Teddy Bear? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for 2004. You never heard that song? No, I. but I. How, oh, he wrote but how amazing song. is it that I knew he was the Velvet Teddy Bear? Hold on. He wrote. We've played it he for wrote a, Who did? We've oh, we did? Okay. Sal. Okay. Who did he. Do you remember this? So I, so I did hear it and I forgot it again? Yeah. Who did he beat uh, to become the American Idol? Clay Aiken? Clay Aiken. Absolutely <laughs> right. And by the way, zero hesitation by Pimp Fett. Oh, zero. Yeah. I, I'd vote for him. He should run for president. Yeah, I did. You have a did you have were you have a fan of uh, American Idol? Yeah. When yes. It, like when it first came out, and they when they were mean, like they showed people like yeah. First Sanjaya. of all, that was like, unreal. Yeah, <laughs> Sanjaya. Sanjaya. Oh yeah, that's Sanjaya. right. But were you ever a fan enough to vote? I was such a fan. I watched the awful movie they made after season one. You did. They made a movie. Kelly Terrible. and Justin. Oh right, so Justin bad. Guarino. Yeah. Guadi. Yeah. No. Guadino. Guarini. 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 I think Kelly Clarkson's the only one who made it out of the fray. I've met Kelly Clarkson. Have you ever gone on a show? She's a sweetheart. Uh, no, I've never. I've never. Yeah, I've I, never met her. I've never met Drew Barrymore. Never met Drew Barrymore, but I went on Kelly Clarkson's a couple times. She was real deal, sweet. She's as advertised. I was on that day. I, do, I told you the story. I think I might have told you it. We go on that day, and we're one of three guests, okay? <laughs> we're the first guests on. The second guest is... No, there's four guests. We're the first guest. The second... Hey guys, if you're new here, you are uh, hearing me talk about BetterHelp for the first time, but if not, you know that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Um, and if you never tried therapy, I would say to give it a try. Uh, from my own personal experience, it has helped me through some of the toughest points of my life, and it also just helps me in my day to day. A lot of people think that you go to therapy for these like you know huge things and have huge revelations, and may that might happen, but it's also to just kind of just be at your tip-top mental shape and process things day to day, you know, um, and reflect. I think it's important to reflect. So 
You can do that with BetterHelp uh, very easily because it is entirely online. It's designed to work around your schedule. It's completely flexible. You go online, you fill out a brief questionnaire, they match you with a therapist. You can switch therapists at any time. Um, if you're thinking of trying it, this is an easy way in, guys. And you know, it is the holidays right now and it is a stressful time. We're seeing our family, we're running around buying gifts for people. A lot of times we're not thinking of ourselves. Uh, and I gotta tell you, you need to take that minute to think about yourself. Um, I think about that more now, but when I was younger running around, I didn't. And so this is the knowledge I'm imparting on you young folk that are watching this podcast. It's the season of giving, so give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash heybabe today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash heybabe. Guys, we have a new sponsor called Dr. Squatch, and this is uh, natural soaps. And I was sent these when they signed on, and I was sent the whole line of scents. And I got to tell you, there isn't one dud in the batch. I was thrilled. They smell amazing, and it made me realize how crappy my soap was that I actually was using. It just makes me feel good about myself, okay? Um, let's, let's talk about some things. No harmful ingredients in this, okay? It's a sensory experience, I'm telling you right now. It's uh, B Corp certified, so Google that if you don't know what that means, because I don't have the time right now. Um, one of Dr. Squatch's founding missions is to encourage men to pay attention to the ingredients they use on your body. Women pay attention all the time. A woman knows what a woman puts on a woman's body. A man does not know what a man puts on a man's body, and you can quote me on that and put it on my stone. Um, here's some of the products they have. Cool Fresh Aloe Soap, Pine Tar Soap, Fresh Falls, which I'm holding my hand, Bay Rum Soap, Wood Barrel Bourbon, Birchwood Breeze, which is my favorite, and uh, also you can get a soap saver. So right now, Dr. Squatch is offering our listeners a huge savings. All new customers will get three free bar of soaps plus three free bars of soap. It's spelt bar of soaps. So, plus free shipping with any purchase of three bars. Just go to drsquatch.com slash heybait to receive this buy three, get three offer. That's drsquatch, D-R-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H dot com slash heybait to, to buy three soaps and get three free. It's time to get all the daily routine essentials you'll need to start feeling good and smelling like a man today. Okay? <laughs> We're the first guests on. The second guest is, no, there's four guests. We're the first guest, the second us and the Gilmore Girls. I don't know who was first or second. Then the, th the third guest, we're sitting out there. And in her show, you stay out there. You don't oh, leave. Yeah. So the guests just keep getting added on. And the third guest was going to be somebody who uh, had cancer or had a loved one die of cancer or something like that. And they were going to talk about this serious, serious stuff. And she's like, th they, we were told by the producers, you just guys stay out, you know. But do your thing, you know, because it's like, it's a heavy subject matter. So we wouldn't mind if you made, you know, made it like light. And I was just like. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to make light of any situation that's about to happen right now. So we just <laughs> sat out there, and the person stood up from that chair and told this horrific story about <laughs> something that was so bad that it involved like death and trauma and sadness, and I, none of us even made a peep, right? And that's then, pretty funny. And then Roy Choi, the chef. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I'm a huge Roy Choi fan. Love Roy Choi. He was coming out for a cooking segment. I'm a Choi boy. He was coming out for a cooking segment. That's good. Thank you. He was coming out for a, a cooking <laughs> segment after that, right after we heard about everyone dying from the cancer. And we had pre-made stations, and we were going to cook with him. And, and I am a huge fan. And, and they said, look, all right, you didn't say anything for the lady with the cancer or whatever. But like with Roy Choi, like this is famously acted up. Do whatever you want. Be zany, crazy. You don't know how to cook the food. Like this is what they're telling us. And I'm like, all right, I don't really want to mess anything up really, though. So we get out there. Roy Choi comes out. I mean, this guy's a G. You know who he is? He, he's yeah. a real G. He's like the, 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 the godfather of the food truck. But he's like, oh, yes. He, but he's a cool ass dude. He's like our age. He's got like a lot of swag. And he's just like, he's known for real liking. Uh, anyway, enough about him. Google. <laughs> he comes out, and I don't really want to be like that guy. But the other guys in the show, I'm with like Murr and everything, like they went full blown. And like they just started like you know lighting a fire and dropping shit and everything <laughs> like that, and it was, I felt so guilty because it was really like overtaking. Like I I didn't want to do that. I want to just cook it real. Like you know he was good enough, and so I started getting like pretty embarrassed and mortified. And then at one point during the whole thing, he like literally turned to us like on the air and was like, "All right, guys, enough. Like you did yours. Let me do mine." You, you said enough or something like that. <laughs> wow. And I was like, oh, my like God. Like, he did not like you guys. Like, he said it politely, but he did say it. 
he was like, all right, guys, come on. You, 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 you had your fun. Let me do what I have to do here. And I was like, oh, my God. And I wanted to be like, tell him, like, they literally told us to do this. I didn't want to do this. I know. But I didn't really do much of it. And then we, it was over. I went to commercial. And then we had to say goodbye. And I was going to tell him how much I like him. But I was so nervous that he was <laughs> mad and had a bad opinion of me. And I was intimidated by him. And so when he went to say goodbye, I was like, oh, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. I'm a huge fan. And then for, for some reason, I don't know why, just... I would have done it to anyone, but it was bad timing. I was like, thank you so much. And oh. But you know, like, you know when you say something What are you like doing? That, Describe what he's doing for the audio yeah, audience. Yeah, I, I, I like, you know. He did, did a Chinese a, bow. No. <laughs> 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 well, hold on a second. It's also, it's also good to be ubiquitous for just like, hey, thanks a lot. Pre like the hands, the emoji of the hands, right? Yes. Like I kind of I, I kind of was like, thank you so much, like that. But instead, sorry. I kind of was like, 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 I wanted it to be like, like you know, thank you. But I guess I just was like, thank you. And then I, and I literally as I did, I go, oh my god. Like I hope he knows I just meant like, like. Have you ever done that before? Ever? Like I've done this, like, like you know, like that. You know what I'm saying? You've like, done that? Yeah. I don't. 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 I don't practice it. I don't practice it. But from afar, like if you were right, if you were right here, I'm like. Right. Like, but if someone's like far away and I was like, oh, you got, you got Sal me. is bowing at the room. I didn't bow. I didn't bow. But for some reason, I bowed to him. But I think it was like because I was intimidated by him and I was like bowing down to him. Right. But it was unfortunate that I also did the appreciation hands and that combined looked like an Asian bow. What did he do? I... I, he just was like, all right, you know, like nothing. Like he didn't even, it didn't register at least to meet him. Like, I don't think anything, but I think I was hyper inside my own head because I was already feeling so guilty and scared. You did that and then Murr came out and you hit a gong? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> she was just us peeing in all the coke. No. <laughs> we no. should get him on the show. Yeah, I mean, I... I, oh, I we are Choi Boys. I, I, I mean, I, I truly love the guy. He he's he uh, helped uh, Favreau make Chef, the movie Chef. I love John and then Favreau. He, he, had, he had his own show. When Chef... Uh, Favreau had that cooking show. Roy came on. Look, this guy is just the coolest dude. I feel like we'd be really good friends. He's also a straight shooter. Listen, if you're watching DM Roy us. Choi, and we know that you are, uh, uh, everything about you for me is a 10 out of 10. And uh, he probably doesn't even remember that day and doesn't even know who I am anymore. But on the off chance, it struck a chord with him and there's some, some tastes left in his mouth from that. They told us to do that. We didn't mean to interrupt your segment. I was thrilled to meet you. I think I got nervous. And that was an appreciation hands that had a bow attached to it. They weren't together and that wasn't intended to be any sign of a genuflect in a culture that I'm not a part of Got to it. someone who might be in that culture. That was not that. Stop the Asian hate. Yeah, stop it. Which is what we've done. Stop it. So John Favreau's father lives across the street from me. Now, what are you talking about now? John Favreau. That what should you, be the name of this me? episode. John Favreau's father. He's from Queens. He, John Favreau's father lives across the How street from me. How do you know me. that? Well, the lady who owns See, the restaurant the told the episode. me. John Favreau's father lives across <laughs> the street from me. The lady who runs the restaurant told me. Will they allow it? Is there a, is there a cap? Oh, God darn That's it. That's like an I think you should leave. Yeah. <laughs> well, can, you, can you write dot, 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 and then finish the rest of it in the, in the, in the body? Uh, it's, it, it'll be a mess. Okay. It'll All be right. A mess. All right. All right. John Favreau's father lives across the street Have from you me. met him? No. Wait, why did that come up from the lady in the restaurant? Because she found out that I did comedy, and she goes, oh, I know a guy who's involved in comedy. I said, who? She goes, John Favreau's father. I said, is he involved in comedy? She goes, no, but he's, his son's John Favreau. <laughs> and she said that he, he, uh, he, lived, he lived there, too, for a little while, and made the journey that he made from Los Angeles came from that apartment building. She said she remembers the day he was leaving to go to L.A. No and then he went shit. on to go make swingers. I thought he went to Chicago and then went there. Or maybe well, she said he remembers the, the day, day he, left he left New York. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he went to study like in Chicago. And that's where he met Vince Vaughn? He met Vince Vaughn on Rudy. Oh, right, Rudy, yeah. yeah. Do you guys know Rudy? Do you know the movie Rudy? Great movie. Yeah. It's, it's more than that, though. Like, it, it was it was a, the biggest movie. Like, no one talks about it anymore. Rudy was a great movie. It was an, a, Nobody talks about it. And wasn't it no. the guy? The no, because guy who it was the all, It was an all-time yes. Sean McKenzie. Kingston. Oh, Sean. He was in um, the movie with the uh, 1980s and uh, the demons. Stranger and, Things. Yeah, Sean. He was Bob. Sean Astin. Sean Astin. Sean Astin. And he had a brother who was also a, a heartthrob uh, at the time. They were in all the Tiger Beat, Teen Beat stuff. Yes. Why do you love this movie? Why is it a classic? Well, the movie is, uh, it's an, it was an instant classic, and it is in the annals of sports movie history as one of the most inspiring, like the miracle 
uh, on 34th Street. Best sports movies, Rudy, Mighty Ducks, and He Got Game. I liked he, yeah. Those are the best ones. Best I, sex scene ever, Jesus Shuttlesworth um, getting recruited, and him and Rick Fox, they just are banging chicks at some school in the South. Look it up. Look it up, Jesus yeah. Shuttlesworth. <laughs> That and the Mighty Ducks, the story of the children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get a hockey team. Mighty um, Ducks is awesome. Yeah, but Rudy is like, you can't watch it and not cry, right? Have you ever watched Rudy and not cry? No. You ever watched no, Rudy and You haven't seen it. You didn't cry? No. Did you watch Rudy? I watched it when I was a kid. Like, was, was, it, was it too much? Was it? I think. I mean, because the, you know. Venetia cried at my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, I didn't see that. You've never seen my big fat Greek no, wedding? No, we, we've covered that, but I've never seen it, no. That's, should I? I think you should. I heard the third one is not great, but no, the first the, one the is first amazing. The first one's good. Okay. Really good. Yeah, got it. It was like I've never seen The Godfather. You talked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. That's on par, I think. Me not seeing The Godfather is in the same With range. With My Big Fat Greek? As you not seeing My Big Fat Greek. No, no. The Godfather is on AFI's top like 100 movies of all time. Big Fat Greek Wedding is on uh, Athens' top <laughs> movies of all time. <laughs> and Astoria. <laughs> Yeah, you got a big uh, Greek contingent over there, right? Where I'm at, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of Greek. You got a lot of Greek, a lot of problems. You got, you got, and you have, a, you have access to a lot of good, uh, different food. Oh yeah, got a lot different of cu cuisines. Cuisine. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I'm prepared to say this on this podcast. Okay. Now I have to travel to this cafe. Shout out cuisine. Shout out cuisine. I don't live. I don't live in the area, but I have to travel to this cafe. But I make it a point to travel to this cafe daily. The Forest Cafe. In uh, I think it's Forest Hills. Are you taking it up with them now? I'm take. I'm telling you, I'm taking it up with the I, Forest I mean, Cafe. That's it's an the, issue for me, and I'll take up that issue with Bloom Cafe. With Bloom Cafe. Bloom. I will tell you, there's. This is not a competition with Bloom Cafe because Bloom Cafe is the best cafe on Staten Island. But now, if we're moving to another borough, I will tell you that in the borough of Queens, which is a big borough, it's almost the size of Rhode Island. Yeah. It is. That's not a fact. Well, it could be a fact. Population-wise, I bet you it's the same size as Rhode Island. A lot of reptilians. Yep. Forest Cafe is unbelievable. Some of the best coffee I've ever had. The bet they have a, a thing called a croffle. It's like a croissant waffle. Amazing. Um, amazing. People are doing that now. They, they, they mix breeds of the foods. Oatmeal is flavored with dates. Flavored with dates. And it's amazing. It's owned by uh, three Oh, I had, a, I had a couple dates last week. There you go. No, Love I mean, I'm not being a joke. Like, I had a couple of like literal dates, and I haven't had dates in quite some time. This oatmeal is flavored with dates, so it's healthy for you. Forest Cafe, uh, I think it's on 68th Avenue or Road in Queens. Unbelievable. Take it up with them. Love them. Love the people. They are amazing. Great people. You really do go to places and you cultivate and you find I them. I love it. And you, and you make yourself a part of the community. Always very nice to me. Very uh, eclectic group of people in there. All different types of people. It's really dope. I love I love living there and living close. I go to that place all the time. And their coffee literally tastes fantastic. And it gives me nice, sustainable energy. And it's owned by Chinese people like Roy Choi. Oh, God bless. Um, how does the sun give you vitamin D? The sun gives you vitamin D because of the ultraviolet rays. What it does is it causes some type of thermogenic reaction in your cells, and then the byproduct of that is vitamin D. So it's producing vitamin D just from itself. So if you were, if you didn't eat for like one month, mm -hmm. and you went out in the sun, you'd be getting vitamin D. I told you you don't have to eat for thirty days, and you can survive. You just have to drink water. That's all. That's what you got to do. So back to my question then. If you didn't eat for 30 days and you survived and you drank water and then you went in the sun, you'd get vitamin D or is vitamin D playing off nutrients we're getting from other food? I, I want to say that is you would just Is it bringing it out? Like, did I get my vitamin D from like a bring steak? Bring them out. Bring them out. Uh, it's uh, hard uh. to yell when the vitamin D is in your mouth. Uh. <laughs> is that what he says? No, Not it says the vitamin barrel. It says ba barrels in your mouth. Oh, barrel. Like we were talking about put a French accent on something. It sounds nice. A barrel. Barrel. Not a barrel. Um, vitamin D. That's how I think vitamin D is made. I could be wrong, but it sounded right. Oh, so you don't know. You just have to confidently give an answer, and then people say it sounds right. Because even when you talk to, like, scientists, like, they're just going to confidently tell you what it is, but I don't know that it's right or wrong. Mm. But if I told you that's But we're taking their word that they did the research. I mean, I said thermogenic. I said... When you said thermogenic, I was all in. I'm like, you know, he knows the answer. How are you going to debate that? Oh, so thermogenic was just something you pulled out of your hole? You no, know, thermogenic is a real word that I remember from physical therapy school, and I do think it's involved in the vitamin D process, but I'm not 100%, but I sounded confident, and I had two feet on the floor yeah. mentally, not physically because yeah. my left foot, I have an Achilles issue. But I had two feet on the floor mentally, and I stood in it, and I con and I was so confident I believed you, that but I, I think the, I could swing you. you no, you, I believed you, but at the end of the day, you, what you said was that the sun 
mix vitamin D. You didn't really. Well, the so, ultraviolet rays happens. of the sun causes a thermogenic reaction in your cells, but we don't the know. byproduct being vitamin D. We don't know though how that happens. We just accept even even as 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 you and we 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 hear from the people that are telling us that. Sure. And we only understand up to a certain amount. Right. And then we still have no ideas how still. Right. We just take it and believe it. And we and we then regurgitate just the portion that we are capable of that we know. Right. Right. But there's a whole you just said a very broad thing, but like this right. you know what I mean? Hey, so, what am I, some broad? Yeah. Some broad you know what broad is? You know why that's like you know what that, that's slang for a woman? Big fat ass. Do you know what, it, what no. broad is? I believe broad, I looked this up once, I believe broad <laughs> was a reference, an old reference to beef or meat, Ooh. and I believe that was used to refer to vagina, but I'm not positive, but we will have V <laughs> look it up. Um, That's funny. What is witch hazel, oh, and why so is it tight. called that? What? What is witch hazel, and why is it called that? Witch hazel is um, a form of a, uh, it's a... Um, like antiseptic, it cleans wounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, right. but, but why is it called witch hazel? Yeah, we'll look broad. I want to say put, because put witch hazel in the queue. What I want to say is why it's called witch hazel because it might have been used for medicinal purposes that at that time they thought did wonders and they couldn't explain it. So anything that couldn't be explained was just thought of as witchcraft. Ooh, not bad. That's pretty good. What do you think? They would observe it. Observe if the branch twisted or dipped, which they believe signal that they had found water. This practice was called water witching and led to the plant's common name, witch hazel. There you go. That's another word. I'm sorry, witch hazel is a plant? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's what it looks like. I didn't know, I didn't know that. Did you ever hear the theory with the witches, Salem witches, that there was actually a root growing in all the vegetables in the Salem and kind of whole New England area at that time? And the same thing in France when they both had their uh, witch trials, that there was a root growing that specifically targeted the brain chemistry of, uh, I think, menstruating women um, and, and, and would make them kind of act irrational and crazy uh, because of this root. And mm -hmm. then that's what they thought. And then, and then the men were saying, well, that, you're witches. And, they, and it was really just a weed, like a noxious weed that was growing. That's a... Big mishap then. It's wild, right? Yeah, yeah. I think shit like that happens more than we think. I think there's literally something in the water or the food, and it makes a groups of people act. I'm, I'm telling you, the overwhelming amount of ev Google tonight. I want you to go home and just Google brain gut connection. The science is yeah. overwhelming that it's all linked. It's yeah. as linked like they think your mind and your memories even are in your stomach. Like this whole idea of the brain, the brain is the brain, but like this whole idea of like the parts of the brain we can't understand. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. You know, you eating your literally you're eating your feelings. That's it's a, it's a true thing. Okay, I'm gonna continue this pattern. I'm asking you a question. Yes, that I don't know and hear what you truly believe it is. Or feel free to volley one back. Go ahead. If you if you'd like to, you uh, ask me one more, and then in the now that I know that the pressure's on me, I'm gonna think of a good one to ask you. Okay. Why is it called charcuterie? Why is it called charcuterie? I don't actually know at all, but I would assume that it's a some type of French word that means meat. That's what mm -hmm. I would think. Okay. That's that's why we're I would still look, we're still looking. I'm waiting for broad. But why charcuterie? I might have stopped me if I've asked you this on the podcast. Why is it called knocked up? Have we talked about that knocked up? I don't know. Yes. Charcuterie comes from two French words, chair, which means flesh, and coot, which means cooked. While you may travel around Europe, you may find charcuterie types of shops. In Hold on. Chair, char, chair, which means flesh. Oh, so not chair. Not char, 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 char. I'm not French. Char, sorry. right. So sh whatever it is means flesh and cooked. So, it's, it, so, so that sounds less appealing then right. to drop it on the thing and say, I got you a nice cooked flesh board. You, you want to say charcuterie because you don't want to say what it really is. Yeah, I don't want, I don't also, want to. isn't charcuterie not cooked? Guys, I love Game Time. Game Time is an app that helps you get the best tickets at the last minute, and it is super simple. They guarantee their pricing. Uh, they have a Game Time guarantee, which is, in fact, that if you, if you,
uh, find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Um, it's awesome. You can get a view from the seat that you purchased. Uh, and I think that's priceless, honestly. Um, there's things called zone deals where like you will pick the game and the section you want to be in and they pick the seat and that's huge savings there. It's, it's, Flash deals at the last second, so you don't have to like plan ahead so much. You don't have to think that you closed out if the thing's going on really soon and you didn't you didn't get it yet. And it's across theater and sports and comedy and music. So check out Game Time. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code HeyBabe for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code HeyBabe. H-E-Y-B-A-B-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute deals, lowest price guaranteed. What's up, guys? Let's talk about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Um... I just got a package a couple of weeks ago, uh, not even one that I uh, bought from them, which I use their service, but they sent me just like a promo holiday package with some of the new recipes in it. And we had a friend's gathering for the holiday, and we used their recipes and their food, and we had, uh, and it was just delightful. And we didn't have to worry about going and, and getting everything and what everybody wanted. We just were like, let's just, everything sounded delicious. We tried it. And so another successful gathering for me with HelloFresh. Uh, what can I tell you about HelloFresh, okay? Uh, well, it's not just dinner, okay? They're, they have free, uh, they have breakfast. As a matter of fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. That is worth waking up for. I mean, am I right, okay? Um, let's see. What about some resolutions? You resolve to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table, which is what I did. But what do you do about those nights when your schedule is packed? Turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. Can't say enough about it. Um, go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabeFree and use code HeyBabeFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. Go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabeFree and use code HeyBabeFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabeFree with code HeyBabeFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Yeah, I don't want to. Also, wanna... isn't charcuterie not cooked? It's okay. like cured, right? They say it like, I guess they cooked it. Cured, okay. All right. right. You could, oh, how about this? Cooked flesh. How about this? Why, why can you, when you get um, a um, what beef tartare that's cold beef, how come you don't get sick? What is the reason why you don't get sick from beef tartare? I am, What's the reason? I imagine that it's a, a high quality, high, highest of quality. Right, it's the high. Are you saying tar it's tartare and carpaccio, not the same thing? Because carpaccio is when it's pounded down to. But little I think it's the same premise. Yeah, right, right, right. Because what happens is, is when when you get beef tartare or I think a carpaccio, they never take it from anywhere near like the inner cavities of the cow, so there could be no E. coli in it. They would take it from like its upper back. Great, but who's doing? Who's running a e. coli tests? From now these days, like who's how does the chef know that there's no E. coli in that? Because the, the chances are very low. And, and, and but you're right, the highest quality meat that's when you go to a fancy schmancy restaurant, same thing yeah. with sush. If you go to these fancy schmancy yeah. restaurants, like you can't get the beef tartare from CVS, you can't do it. No, you can't do it because you don't know where the hell that's from. No. <laughs> no, you, can't. you can't, you can't, you can't trust me. You don't do it, don't do it, Pim, don't do it when you leave here. Don't do it as soon as you Yo, leave Pim, here, Pim. You crazy, Pim, call, don't do it as soon as you leave and then call tonight and let us know the results. Don't do it. And they drop it into a bucket of ice for like a few seconds. Wait, what are we on? Beef tartare? This is yeah. a broad? Oh. Not broad. All right. I'm coming to you about broad. Right? Okay. They Charcuterie? Boil, they, I mean, not for nothing. They boil the meat and then drop into... They boil the flesh, then drop into ice water, and then they put grapes around it. I'm going to ask you a hard question that seems like it could be easy, but it's really hard. If you can... If you can think about what was the best moment of 2023 specifically for you... 
First thing that comes to mind, go with that. What is it? I would say... The best moment of 2023. I would say... Uh, well, you know, after I filmed the, the last... Uh, the, I, this is off the top of my head. After I filmed the last uh, show of the special and I walked off to my family. Best moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's up there. But what's the best? Let's, let's say that. I, I tend okay. to really, I tend to really believe that the little moments are the best. Yes. You know, so like I just like I really like the, just the regular forgetful days that we just really live our lives and spend time with the, the family. Well, that I'm, is. I'm trying to really like cherish that. Right that's now. I heard Jerry Seinfeld in the book The Daily Dad. Jerry Seinfeld talks about the garbage time. He's like, you know, people want all, always talking about parents always talk about quality time, quality time, which is important. But Jerry Seinfeld's like, I want the garbage time with the kids. I want the time when, you know, we're not, it's not a mandated thing. We're yeah. watching a movie. It's like just time taking them to school, time, you know, whatever at the dinner table and they're not even looking at me. Like I want right. that time right. with them too, which is interesting. Yeah. Well, why do you ask? Uh, and do you have yours? I mean, what, what, what? no, is I, that just for no? For just you just trying to pinpoint? Well, no, because because I always every day I I you know when my kids get out of school I ask them the same questions. I always ask them one. I was like, what was the most exciting moment of your day? I like to know that. And I said, what was the what was this? Was there a scary part of your day? Right. And what was the lowest part of your day? I don't just say how was school. Right. I want to get like very specific with them. Talking. And my daughter and stepson used to say like, no, dad, that's too hard. Like I can't. It's too, but now because we do it, they always they think about like when it happens, mm -hmm. they they're like, oh, my dad's gonna ask me. Right, right. That's so they great. always come in now with kind of like wild and like little kids. Like when you ask them that specifically, like their minds go to the little things too. Like Delilah said to me once, oh, the best moment of my day is it wasn't even you know, it was still it was cold out. It was three weeks ago. She's like, oh, the wind. Uh, I was walking in the hallway and the wind blew my hair. She said that. Yeah, and she was like, and I, I, I that wow. was like, made me feel good. That's so, pretty cool. You know, and she it wasn't like, oh, she's, you know, she's appreciating the little things, she, right? Which she's is finding what, beauty in every day, right? Which I think that's that's the that's the biggest thing. And you know, that for me, the, the the it was, it happened like two months ago. Did I tell you about the old lady outside the coffee shop? She lived in the shoe. They live in the shoe. Yeah. The old lady lived in the she shoe. She swallowed a fly. Swallowed a fly. So the old lady, so I was sitting outside Forrest Coffee Shop, right? I'm sitting outside Forrest Coffee Allegedly. Shop. Allegedly. Allegedly. Or oh, it's called Forrest Cafe. Forrest Cafe in Queens. Excellent place. Love it. Great coffee. Great power. Um, protein bites that are like, you know, cocoa, almonds, dates, rolled balls. Okay. Uh, shout ginger, out power in shout general. Shout out power. Gingerbread. Uh, pound cake. Really uh, amazing. Um, so really good stuff. And uh, just great people there. So... Anyway, I'm Did sick. you invest in it? No. Okay. I wish. Man, I invested all my money in Joey Roses. <laughs> 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 uh, you're not alone. So, this has been Hey Babe. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, Joey no, Roses, new location opening strong. up in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> 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 opening up online. <laughs> yes, yes. So no, it's, it's, I think it's still going no, great. Joey Roses is it's fucking unbelievable. It's slamming, it's banging and swinging. Sandwiches are unbelievable. I actually yeah. haven't had a JRS in a while. I had one a couple of weeks ago. I didn't even tell Joey. I just went in there, paid anonymously, loved he it. He doesn't even know you did that. No, because I support the biz, because I do genuinely love the sandwiches. The best tuna fish sandwich I've ever had in my life at Joey Roses. Yeah, I actually might want to go there and get the run the run the table Let's and maybe it. bring some home eat them all yeah you know what's funny and you can continue what you were going to say i don't yeah. want to interrupt you but say it but i'm there's a you go ahead know what's funny but just know that i'm i'm hoping to laugh oh no it's not I'm funny in, the, in that respect. Comedy show. okay fine uh -huh. you know you know what's funny? You, you ever you ever go to joey <laughs> roses and get the fat kid oh i love the fat kid that's the one with the peanut butter peanut butter jelly yeah. and potato chips, chips right? but like he didn't do anything there really you know what i mean but Yes. But he did. But he did. I, I I love it. It's the one sandwich that's I always think about from there, even though I like them all. But it's it's funny because it's jarred. It, it's just we have access to it. The bread makes a difference, but also he triple layers it. That's the and it's just fun. It's like you know, like when, when do you sit down, triple layer a PBJ, and add chips to it? Because also, I think he did two things there. Very smart. One, you're right. He did not reinvent the wheel. What he did though was number. When do you ever see? peanut butter and jelly on a menu. It's like ordering a bowl of cereal. If you put bowls of cereal on the menu, people would order people that all the time because that's the thing you eat at home. But Joe said, I'm going to put it on the menu and people order. And then the sprinkling the potato chips is and the three layers is the extra accoutrements yes, that yes. people like. 
I'll tell you what, I used to, you know, run a bar and we had a menu that started at midnight. And it was, you know, the midnight menu. A truncated, you know, it was the midnight yes. menu. And uh, I, we would have input sometimes. And I was like, I'm telling you, I was like, you put on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you could have the sides cut off or not, the crust cut off or not. That's right. the, your option. It comes with a glass of milk. And uh, I said, that's going to be, that's going to be banging. You could toast if you want to PBJ and, and you put on this menu. And I thought I was going to kill it. No one, no one bought it. No one bought it. Yeah, no one bought well, it. Well, wrong clientele. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, I just need more like skelly people from the Lower East Side. Skelly people, yeah. Yes. yeah. Or, and, you know, the, the bar is right next to a school. Get the kids coming in, That's order right. PBJs. That's right. Kids, come on down to Joey Rose's anytime. <laughs> it's 130, 169, Rivington, 139. It's, I think it's at 171, 169. 171, 169. It's ah. across from your school. Uh, <laughs> Get in. They do not ID check. Um, they don't, yeah. And you can get peanut butter and jelly there and play games. There it is. It's 174 Rivington Street. There you go, Street. kids. 174 Rivington Street. Stop by Joey Rose's <laughs> social club. And uh, Yes, and it is a safe space not for need, trans people. You don't need your parents. <laughs> you don't need your parents. <laughs> and, um, you know. Um, so. You go in, and if you go in and you look, the hard right, there's a small door. If you go hard right, or if you go into the back, you can go past like the curtains, and then there's like a little room with a meat slicer. You'll find Joey in one of those. You'll find Joey in one of those. <laughs> um, okay, so so best moment yeah. of, of my year, Forest Cafe, which I love. Forest Cafe. I'm sitting out there. I was. It was. It was. It was about early November, so it wasn't warm. It wasn't cold. I was sitting outside. I had a Patagonia puffer on the Patagonia. nano puffer. Yeah. Patagonia puffer nano. Sitting there, I'd got just. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was got an, a cup of iced coffee, black, the way I like it, cold and black. And I'm sitting yeah. there drinking, and it was unbelievable. I took the first sip, I was like, "Wow, it hit me. It was just beautiful." And I'm texting with Maddie Healy, the lead singer of the 1975, who's now become a friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sal stretching. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fucking tell me how that happened? When did that happen? That how do you know? How do you not? How do you? How do I not know that? I know. How do you not, when did this happen? I was trying to. Keep how did it happen? Did you manifest it? Was it by chance? Are you really friends? Show me the text chain. Okay. Like, so, do you talk about cool stuff, or yes. is it just like touch base? So really. So what do you feel now? Have you seen them for free? Did they give you a ticket? No. Just expound. No. I same way I support Joey Roses, I'll always support the 975. So bought a bought ticket. But what I did is I bought a ticket, bought a ticket, but then I got in touch with him because we were DMing, and he gave me his cell number. And he more said, uncomfortable in my life. I, and he gave me his cell number, and he said, text me, and he said, Wait, text. You were DMing why? Because he DMed me. He DMed me last year because I talked about it on Joe Rogan. So he you talked you talked about him on so, Joe so we started DMing yeah. and then he gave me his phone number. They came to Madison Square Garden in November, so I went to go see the show and then I got to meet him after the show. But yeah, that that uh, that's a text oh, chain wow. with him. Yeah. And so do you? Does he know? He knows that you. This Obsessed. is the only band you really listen to. And, he knows. He knows okay. all about it. He's a cool dude. Very cool guy. Yeah. Very very cool guy. I mean I mean I said here. Can I read one? Yeah. I said this. Is how you know? He's are a cool you guy. green or are you gray? I'm green. How are you green? Because he doesn't have an iPhone. Or I, oh, oh, right. But he oh, said, so you're great. I got you. I said, I said, um, uh, I said, uh, he did a bit with this. He put this kid up. He put up. He put this kid up on the jumbotron. Uh, this kid, Caden. He made it was on his Instagram, and he did like this really great thing for him. Like the kid, I think was sick or something, and he did something really nice. And I said, the Caden bit is classic, great stuff, man. You made his life because it was a really cool video. And he goes, he is so sweet. I said, I teared up at the New York Sports Club. My boy was like, what's wrong? I said, Maddie is at it again. And he wrote, so gay. And I wrote, nobody gayer than me. Don't ever forget that. He wrote, I'm English and in the 1975. <laughs> which, I, which I thought was amazing. That's cool. Uh, which I thought that was an amazing text when he said it. Because he just knows who he is. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and anyway, so I'm- Is he gay? No, oh. no. He's, he's gay like I'm gay. Like, you know, uh, like, you know. Actually, he lost Taylor Swift this year. He did. Maddie Healy and Taylor Swift broke up, and then, but you know, he dated Taylor Swift. Maddie Healy was dating Taylor Swift in the beginning of the year. That didn't come get to my desk. So Maddie and Taylor dating, but whatever. But anyway, I'm texting Maddie Healy, and and I'm like, wow, I was kind of having a moment. I was like, look at where my career. I started listening to these guys ten years ago, and now I'm texting with the lead singer. We're having fun, whatever. I'm like, what what a beautiful thing. And I'm just sitting there enjoying. My daughter was at uh, ballet class. My two year old was was at my mom's house taking a nap. 
And I was sitting there and this old woman comes up to me, 91 years old. She comes up to me and the sun was like shining. She was getting vitamin D for she sure. She was getting vitamin D. Thermog and, something thermogenic was happening. Yes. And then she sits down, she sits down next to me, doesn't, you know, at, there was room on the bench, but she sits down next to me and she goes, she looks at me, she goes, oh, you have such beautiful teeth, honey. And I was like, oh, thanks. I'm like, no one's ever said that. And she was like, do you floss? And I said, I said, not, honestly, not regularly, like not enough. She's like, you have very nice teeth. And I said, yeah. And she goes, uh, she just starts talking to me. She goes, how old are you? I said, I'm 39 years old. She goes, 39, you must be at a point in your life where you think the best days are behind you. And I said, um, yeah, I feel that at times. She goes, you know why you feel that, right? I said, no. She goes, because your youth is ending. Your youth is actually ending, but the best parts of your life, I think, are beginning. But she said, but your youth is over. When you're 40, you're not youthful. And you can act youthful, but your youth is over. You're now becoming a mature adult. And I said, wow. I said, no, she doesn't know you that well. True. Okay. I know. I know. As I, I ripped a fart. right? On <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, I said, okay. And she said, um, wow. And she said, I'm 91 years old. She said, I worked at a dental dentist office for 25 years. She goes, that's why I know your teeth. You have very nice teeth. I was like, thanks. And she was like, believe it or not, the best years of my life started in my 60s. She goes, if I could go back to any decade, she goes, I'm 91 now. If I could go back to any decade, I would pick my 60s. She goes, do you believe it? Believe it or not. And I said, I said. Did you ask her about what, what happened? In well, 60s? I said to her, why? She was like, because she said, my children were older. It was the late 90s. Yeah, she was like, my children were older. She's like, I love Criss Cross. Right, I love Criss Cross, yeah. <laughs> she was like, I was one of the original. Uh, She's like, that's so Raven had just come out. I was original Al-Qaeda. <laughs> and, and, and she said, so she says, um, she says, because my children were older, she goes, I knew who I was. She goes, I was still healthy in my 60s. She goes, and I just felt like I had given all I had to this world and I paid all my dues. And every day past that was just any day is a good day and truly a blessing. She was like, and I felt like that for a long time. And I said, well, do you miss like, you know, your, your kids being like young and stuff. Cause she was mm -hmm. like, cause I said, I have young kids. She goes, no, no, I don't miss that. I miss me being young. She goes, cause now I'm old. Now I can tell you that I'm old. I feel my body old, I feel my brain being old. And she was like, um, so I was like, well, do you have like any advice for, for me then? And she was like, I would say that whatever you're feeling, whatever you want to do, you absolutely do it. She goes, and that includes love. I said, I have like a, you know, partner and kid. She goes, that includes love. She goes, I think too many of us just stay in relationships we don't really like and we're, we're doing things we don't really like and we let all these opportunities pass. She goes, and you're going to regret it all. She goes, and I tell your wife the same thing. She said, the number one thing that you and your partner need to have above all is you better be kind to each other. Kindness is key. She said that like three times. She goes, kindness is key. If she's not being kind and you're not being kind, move on to the next relationship kindness she oh and then she told me kindness is the only real currency of the world is you being kind to others that's how you get paid and you get paid back is kindness i swear i was just sitting there drinking coffee texting maddie healy getting hard and she goes kindness is currency and then i swear to god i was feeling and she pissed herself she pissed herself she was looking at me and I said, she, like, it was bugging me out because her face, her face looked exactly, exactly like my Aunt Eileen. Like, exactly. Where I was like, this looks like my aunt. Like, this looks exactly like my aunt. She just, same hairstyle, same face. And then so we're talking. And she actually had a friend with her. And the friend went and got the coffee. So they come out. And, and I go, um, I say, oh, you know, thanks for the talk. Um, I said, what, what was your name? She goes, well, this is Sheila. She goes, this is my friend Sheila. We've been friends for 50 years. She goes, and I'm Eileen. And wow. I swear to God, my hair stood on the back of my neck. I was like, wow. holy shit. I texted my aunt Eileen immediately. I was like, are you a dead? Are you, <laughs> are dead? you a dead? <laughs> are you a dead? And she was like, I'm fine. Wow. I was you like, gotta, thank you God. I love it. You got to love that. that was, so that, that was the best moment of my 2023 is this woman telling me kindness is currency and basically to cheat on my wife. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we really. should all che be cheating on each other. Right, right, right. Wow. That's it. I mean, look, when she's looking back, she knows what she should have done. So anything you wanted, that's what I was getting at before. To just F it, just do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. Which we know, but like, we really do it. Like, what if we just, did you ever think about taking what you have, budgeting yourself for as long as you possibly can, right? Like the rest of your life. And then just like not living above your means, 
quite the opposite, being a little more minimalist, simplifying, and then just have every day for the rest of your life free to do what you like? That's what I strive to do literally every day, and that's what I think about every day. And that's I mean, what you my need to provide are. for your family. Yeah, but, but then cut uh, to me going first class on Emirates Airlines to go do a show in Dubai. <laughs> 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 but that's okay because you already flew Southwest, so you could feel like Joe DeRosa. And and yes. and, and <laughs> but that's what my that's what my hope is for 2024 is to try to live within my means and just say because there is you know I got a bigger family, so it's like there is just a certain cost that comes in with kids going to school and mortgages gotta, and all that. That's but, what I, that's that's what you got to. You got to be Budget like, right, that, education. But then everything else is just like, you yeah. know, like do the work that we're doing here just to like live free. I, I have been thinking about that more. No, but what I mean is like take everything that you have. You, you have to do your thing. So, soon. Just call it. We'll, we'll stop. I'm we'll, doing an audition for what we. No, I'm saying you shadows. just let me know. Yes. But you let me know you when you want to show. What should I do? No, you're a veteran in that show. What should I know going into the audition? Well, I did an audition. Right. So I couldn't help because they wanted me to play myself. Right. So, but I will tell you that the set was amazing and all of them are so funny and so kind. And I had the, it was like one of the best days. Did you do it in Toronto? I did do it in Toronto. This is where, this is where the, yeah. the, the, the Toronto. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read, they want me I to play. I got lucky. I was in a scene with all of them at one time. I'm, I'm a fan. So to Guillermo. Yeah. Guillermo. Guillermo. Yeah. Guillermo. Yes. But who's not a vampire or he, they turned him into a vampire. But I don't think he was born a vampire. No, no, no. He didn't know in the beginning. There's a, there's a whole journey for Guillermo. You've seen every app? Uh, not this season. I have not. I've seen all the way up to, I think they're on season five. Do you see. think I'm going to get the part? I actually really do. You think it, it's in there? I really do believe it. You told me what it was, and I could, I just know you'd probably be, I, I'm excited to see what you do. All right. You said you prepared for it yesterday. I prepared for it. How did you prepare? I did. Take us inside. Okay. Okay. I did, uh, I, so what Take I, us inside the actor's mind. So what I did was, what I did was, you're playing. It's auditioned for us, uh, a, a role. Uh, um, uh, you know, a guy uh, playing like I'm like a the leader of like a like a like a uh, investment firm. Yeah. And I'm playing like a role. Hancock and Sons. Congratulations. We finally got it. Kudos to everyone around Hancock and Sons. A name synonymous. With classical men's fashion, I guarantee you, JFK banged Marilyn Manson, Marilyn Monroe. I'm sorry, Marilyn Monroe in a Hancock and Sons tuxedo. That's how you know this is a quality acquisition. And let me tell you something: fucking kudos to the people at the LBO team. You guys deserve it. Congratulations, everybody. Wow, okay. that's a, that's a significant amount of lines. No, uh, that, that's a C1. that's a that's a run, man. That's that, C1. That, yeah, and oh, that's scene one, and then you get the, you're saying that all at the same time. Guillermo, let me ask you a question. Yes, you know the guy that always comes in. The, you know him. He's the you know janitor. You know his name, Andy or some bullshit. What's his name? Oh, Andy, I think it is. Sure, yeah. What's his name? Noberto. <laughs> Fucking idiot. If that's his name, whatever. Well, listen to me. He. Every time he comes in and tries to dump out my wastebasket, the guy has a 10-minute conversation. So do me a favor. Fucking fire him. Can you do that? I, I guess I can. Guillermo, let me tell you something right here. This guy, this little ding-dong right here, absolute partner material. I promise you. This is good. Dude, what do you think? Wait, wait. So, that's how much scene. of that is dialogue of yours, and how much are you take in liberty? That was that was the, that's the dialogue. With fucking in there and everything. Yeah, yeah. The cursing and, no the, and, shit. and then they told me on top of ad lib. They said ad lib. This little ding dong, all that. Ding dong is 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 uh, dialogue. Wow. What do you think? You think you it's so believable? You, you prepare, prepare for it. Meaning you ran the lines, you felt the, the lines, lines, you got I it. Kind of thought about the person, place, time. What does this guy think? Investment about? firm. Yeah, you said investment head firm. Of it? Canon Capital, head of it. He's, I he's maybe shaved and uh, your hair is good for it though. The hair, the suit jacket. Yeah. He's a bit of a douchebag. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's some kindness behind him, but he also comes off like a dick. But then people genuinely like him, but he's a bit of a dick. Is this a recurring? I think it's one episode, okay. one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I like it. So you think you think? So if they believable? Yes, I do believe it. And if they say to you, "That was great. Take it a different way, or take it again." And then what I would do is probably slow down, okay, or go faster. Okay. This been hey babe. <laughs> <laughs>